Here's an EICO model 147A signal tracer. This is my uh, first real attempt at using the tripod, so apologies if the video isn't perfect. This uh, particular one was built in 1978. Uh, I know that because the original owner wrote that down in the manual, constructed 9378. I don't know when this kit was actually sold. I think it's a little older than that, but I'm not 100% sure. This model has been in production for a very long time, or had been in production for a long time, I should say. This is probably uh, one of the later examples. You can see it looks like it just rolled off the assembly line. pretty much perfect. No corrosion anywhere, no real significant scratches or anything. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a better example of this model. Comes with both of the probes. The only thing I've done so far to this thing is uh, resolder the uh, connection to the shield and to the tip there. Whoever built this, I guess, used a pencil soldering iron that didn't get hot enough to make a good connection. So I redid that. This thing does work uh, well. I'm not sure that it's forming at 100%. I don't really have a better one to compare. I have a really trashed one that I got at uh, Cutstown for like 15 bucks. And uh, I picked this one up um, a couple months after that on eBay for like a hundred, uh, actually not even a hundred bucks, for fifty bucks with a buy it now. Um, that was a great deal. So I've got an Emerson 888 here. Just to uh, demonstrate this thing on. Switch that over to audio, or rather RF. It was on audio. So that's a trace, and wait for the tubes to warm up. See that eye tube there glows like new. Nice and bright. This is the gain control for both the audio and the RF tracer. See if I can get something here. I have yet to find a signal tracer that's really useful for tracing the early RF stages. Well, this thing's a little more sensitive than most. You just said you don't like the discount double check. That's just, that's just funny. Um, so that's a big man doing the discount double check. That's just funny. Rogers! <laughs> John, John, thank you very much. I this is the audio section over here. You don't really need the uh, AF probe. You can probe the AF sections just fine with the RF probe. Like that's the output transformer connection right there. I will show you the uh, AF probe though. For some reason it's constructed significantly differently from the uh, RF probe. I don't know why they put this, you know, bare wire on there, but that's apparently how it was. You can see the RF probe's got a nice uh, insulated clip lead. So 
you gotta be careful with this. I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this thing or not. If I do, I might put some uh, insulated tubing over this this uh, ground wire here so it doesn't short out against the radio. That's particularly uh, dangerous with tube radios. Not that it's good for transistor radios. This thing has really pretty much been never used, so the jacks are still really uh, tight. Those pin jacks would have been really obsolete by the time this thing was made. Banana plugs were the standard by then. Oh, it's still set to uh, RF. Now it's set to audio. So that's the audio transformer there, or audio output transformer. One of the output transistors. So let me paint a picture for you. Are, uh, let's say they're 70 and 8. You get the idea. In addition to the signal tracing uh, features, it's also got uh, an option to use this as a test amplifier or test speaker or a, a watt meter. Plug a device into that socket there. And then uh, I believe adjust this for the IDA close. I have to check the manual. I haven't used that feature. You also use this as a substitute output transformer. When this is on, there's B plus on that pin there, as it as it says. So uh, you have to be careful with that. It's like 160 volts. The earlier example I have has rubber feet on the bottom. This one, as you can see, just has uh, bumps on the bottom. And the paint is still intact on them. Well, they don't bump anything, right? <laughs> Here's the manual that came with it. it uses a uh, 112AX7. 16AQ5, 16 uh, iTube. I believe that's a World War II surplus tube. So it's quite a bit older than this unit. And a 6X4 rectifier. And then a 1N48 diode in the probe. The person who assembled this was very meticulous. They added notes everywhere and corrected mistakes in the manual. You can see there's not too many parts in there. There's the schematic of this thing. And then tucked into the back are the uh, addendums. Pretty crudely photocopied. 
Well, they're likely factory. There's a little guide on the, where the authorized service centers are and reading resistor codes, capacitors. I haven't replaced any of the capacitors inside of this thing. Um, if it's really as new as it says in the manual, then uh, I guess I don't really need to worry about it too much. There should be no paper capacitors in there. And uh, the electrolytics aren't that old. I did have this open uh, last year. I don't really remember what I saw in there for sure. I do believe I saw only plastic capacitors though. No, uh, no old paper ones. So I think this is going to be alright. I might sell this. I'm not 100% sure. I'm definitely getting rid of the crappier one though. Well, thanks for watching.